Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ron Doyle on uh, Maryland's Eastern Shore. I uh, have rough wired this house and I am in the trim out phases of this house. Uh, this particular customer wanted uh, two in the wall TV boxes uh, with low voltage ring built in. So that basically marry a, a TV to the wall on a, on a tilt mount or a pivoting mount. And uh, I, I've been using Arlington products and um, I'm installing a, uh, a TV BU505. That is the uh, cover for the, uh, the actual device when you buy it. Uh, and it looks looks like this. You got the uh, 120 volt side on this side, and you got the low voltage on this side. And uh, the nice thing about these, uh, these boxes is uh, new construction, you're gonna install it without the trim ring, hold on to the trim ring during the trim out phases, you're gonna add the, uh, gonna add the trim ring to it. And uh, you know, tighten these, tighten these ears up, which pinch it to the sheetrock. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but uh, this customer started out with two, uh, one in the great room and one in the loft area uh, for gaming. And uh, the homeowners decided to uh, add another one to me for the uh, master bedroom. So this is a great opportunity to show you how to install this uh, combination box from uh, Arlington. So uh, what you get with this product is. Uh, Basically, your your box, your trim ring. You get a hardware packet, which is basically two uh, three and a half inch drywall screws, and uh, you get a hard double decor plate. Uh, what you're going to need to buy when you install these. Uh, of course, we're in the we're in the uh, 2017 code, 2020 code hasn't kicked in yet, uh, but you're going to need a uh, a tamper proof decor. Uh, white receptacle to match the uh, trim the trim plate that they give you with it, and uh, this is a uh, Arlington. Uh, most people call these feather boards. Um, some people call them brush plates. Uh, so basically, this is where your cables are going to come through. And uh, basically, when when you get this done, I mean you're looking through plastic on this, but you'll get the general idea. Basically, it's going to look like that with your cables hanging through on this side. So I'm going to walk you around the corner. Uh, on this uh, other side, I've already got the other ones installed, and we'll show you what they look like. So, this is the loft area where they're going to do their gaming, and uh, you got the uh, low voltage box coming up from the bottom. It's a cut box. It's a standard uh, 18 cubic inch. I cut the back out and run the cables up through it. So it's a home run from this bottom box all the way outside toward the panel, and then the upper box. I've got my uh, lines pulled up in the wall. Uh, and I do that after the uh, rough end's done, the sheetrock's done. I put a tether string on it and pull the cables up. I've already got that. Let me show you a close-up of what this, what this looks like. So basically these cables can be, can be pulled down if you need more, more room on cabling. But the, uh, the yellow wire is the uh, home run and the blue and the red, red and then the blue are uh, cables that go up to this location right here. And uh, basically these are loose in the wall. This is a open cavity wall. And if you notice, my stud is on this side of the box. And on this one, my stud is on this side. So I've got all this room to play with in getting these cables up the wall. So uh, now that uh, this customer's added one to me, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it. The other one that uh, I installed you can see the uh, you can see the uh, built-in fireplace, and then I've got the uh, cabling right there for the TV that goes on this wall. Now the entertainment equipment is going to be sitting on that counter, and uh, you can see the cables coming out of the wall. I've got an inch and a half conduit that goes up this wall, and it turns it turns 90, and it goes this way to this location. Um, need a little bit of help pulling uh, pulling this today, but I was able to get it done. So uh, let me set you up on this, on this tripod here and uh, I'll show you how to do it. Now I like to set my boxes fairly high to the ceiling uh, down because your, your TV mount is going to be located somewhere in here. And uh, they're normally 8 to 12 inches wide depending on what they, they pick out and what size the TV is. But I want, enough, I want enough pivot on the back that the cables can be nestled up in the back of the TV up high. If you put them too low on the wall it's going to be in the way of the mounting bracket, uh, tilt bracket, pivoting bracket. So uh, what I'm gonna do is hold this box up there and I'm gonna pull my existing measurement. When I did rough framing, I do uh, 12 and a half down. Might make a liar out of me. 
We are at nine and a half. I set it up a little higher on this one. So we're going to go around this uh, other side of the wall and uh, show you how it's done. All right, we're on the other side of this wall. This is the uh, master bedroom. This is where the TV is going on this wall up high. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll my MM Romex wires out of the wall. Now these wires come from the bottom side, the first floor up, and then they go back down. So there's nothing in the way impeding me from pulling wires up this wall. This one's the same way. It's coming from the bottom up. So uh, I got lucky on that. Now I didn't cut the box. I didn't cut this box in the back. I'm going to do that now and uh, open this up. Now this is a free span cavity, which my stud is on this side of the box. You can hear it. All this is hollow in between. On this side, my stud is on this side of the box. All this is hollow in the middle. We've got 12 and 3 quarters to play with. That shouldn't be a problem getting the wires up this wall. Uh, if you're in a pre-existing home, what you want to look for is uh, go underneath the house, look for uh, plumbing vent stacks that may be in this wall if you're doing this in an old home. You could go in the attic and look at the top plate. So measure over from the exterior wall to the center, exterior wall to the center, and check this area out thoroughly to make sure that this is an open cavity. You can try a stud finder. I don't like relying on those. Um, I'm gonna cut the back of this box out. I'm gonna put an inspection mirror in this hole, and I'm gonna make sure that we're clear to go before we cut a hole at the top of this wall. Uh, it could be a costly repair if you're doing this in your home that you're living in. Now, I'm cutting the low voltage box only. I'm not cutting the box that has 120 volts in it. Uh, there's nothing saying that you can't cut the back of a low voltage box out. Uh, most of them that are sold at the store are low voltage rings only. So I'm going to get you set up and I'm going to proceed with cutting this box out. Try not to cut my wire. See if I can show you. I can show you what this looks like. You can see that I've cut the back side out. I've left a little bit of stability because you got to figure there's there's a nail at the bottom and at the top of this box that supports it to this the stud where it's a nail on. So you don't want to cut it all out, uh, but enough that you can get the cabling in. So you set up on the stand and uh, proceed with some uh, measurements. I've checked the. Uh, Back side of both of these walls, this is a master bathroom behind this wall, and the loft area is behind that side, and this actually falls behind the uh, coat closet, and there's no, uh, there's no piping in the wall, uh, but I'm going to do a quick visual inspection with a telescopic inspection mirror. Um, these can be bought from a lot of places. Uh, you could possibly borrow your wife's cosmetic mirror and uh, use that with a combination of a flashlight. So let's give a quick look at this. Wide open, not a problem. All right, from the door casing, uh, let's see, 41 to this stud, and 53 and a half to this stud. 41, 53 and a half. Right, 41. 
Oh, come on. Three and a half. All right. Light pencil marks. These can be these can be erased with a magic uh, a magic eraser. Okay, and we're going nine and a half down. Now, where this is new work, old work, okay, we've got our electric on this side, we've got our low voltage on this side. And the way that this works is the screws that hold this to the stud go through this upper corner. So I want to mount this pretty solid in case somebody's tugging on the wire from this port. They're not going to snatch this box out of the wall. So I'm choosing to put my box on, on this side of the stud. So facing left side. What we've got is a total width of five and a quarter inches and it's five and fifteen sixteenths tall so we're going to mark it out at we're going to mark it out i say five and a quarter it's more like five and three sixteenths so what i'm going to do is take this box flip it upside down i'm going to line it up with the top going across in this side so it's lined up with my my levels I'm going to draw this across here and this across here and what I'm going to do is get the saw started and I'm going to work from the center that way until I hit the, the edge of the stud now the main reason that we're going to start in the center on the top line and we're going to work that way in case this stud that goes up and down this wall is not totally level, we don't want to scar the sheetrock in a fashion that this trim ring on this outside is not going to cover it. So basically uh, cut once and do it right. So we're going to start at the center and we're going to start inside the lines. Nice and easy. All right, we are at the edge of our stud. Right there so you can see that our stud from the door measurement over is about five eighths of an inch out so what I'm going to do is put my blade in put it in backwards to the edge of the stud and that's our new reference mark and we're gonna do the same thing to the bottom starting in the middle on the inside of the box that I've drawn out with a little bump Now, we need to remark our line. So what I'm doing is holding this up there and using that new reference mark, I'm gonna draw a new line over here. That's our new mark that we need to go by. This is an interior wall. There is no insulation in this wall. And before I go all the way through, I want to finish out on this side with a fresh line.
do a test fit. Make sure your ears are folded in. Hold the center of the box. And that's what she'll look like. Now she's resting up beside a stud on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our wires pulled up the wall first. Uh, so this isn't in our way. And then we'll go ahead and attach this. All right, now we're going to be pulling cables up this wall. You need 120 volt wire. I would recommend whatever you've got going through this circuit, which I've got 14.3 going feeding in, feeding out. You want to keep the same wire size feed up to this box. If you have 12.2, I recommend you doing 12.2 to it so you're compliant to code. So uh, what I'm going to do is pull a measurement from the bottom of the box to the top. I got six foot one. I'm going to cut a piece of 14.2 NM wire. Uh, six foot one plus three foot for extra pull so I'm not fighting the spool. Now the hardest wire that's going to be getting up this wall is going to be this 14-2 uh, and where I'm not cutting this box out because it would it would be uh, against the code. I'm going to break a knockout out and I'm going to straighten this wire as I shove it up the wall. I'm going through this nail on knockout on the top side. So you get a pair of needle nose or screwdriver on this top corner punch it out make sure it's out of the way and as you guide this up the wall keep it as straight as possible so that it appears at the top of the hole if this is an insulated wall uh, this is going to be very difficult for you almost impossible uh, this is not insulated it shouldn't be an issue and you may have to do it in a back and forth motion to feed this up now if this doesn't work, we'll use fish sticks. I'll show you how to do that if we run into that issue. Let's see if I got lucky. Easy pleasy, lemon squeezy. This is the wire going up, this is our in feed, this is our feed to other. So let's go ahead and uh, drop the cabling from the top side down for the low voltage. All right, I got a uh, pre-made up cable here. I got a 15 foot HDMI cable and we have two RG6 cables. I've got red bands of tape, uh, continuous down the wire, same as you can see that on the camera, blue blue that identifies the top and the bottom they'll have two cables to play with with the uh, equipment they're installing so try to keep this as straight as possible and feed this down in a shaking motion until it reaches the bottom we'll go in with the hook pull it out It's actually you can see it it's hitting that wire. So what I'm gonna do is try to get my hand, I got a big hand, I'm gonna try to get my finger around that wire. Got a piece of scrap uh, 14 gauge wire. Got a little hook. Let's go for something thicker. I usually keep a piece of 10 gauge wire 
in my bag. Got it right here. Can 10 gauge is a lot stiffer. You get a little bit better uh, ability to hook and pull. Pull too much. Give it a little shake, send some more down. Made a horseshoe out of this, uh, closer. Made a horseshoe. I'm gonna put it between my fingers. I'm gonna pull on this cable. job. Alright, what we're going to do is determine what knockout we want to pop out. Either this one or the one on the top. Facing this side, it's going in on, on that side of the stud. I'm going to break the bottom out. And they give you a Romex bushing for this application. And She's right here. She's a split Romex bushing. Let's see if you can see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to snap it over the wire in a fashion that it's going to go up in the box. We've got plenty of hangout at the bottom. So I'm going to start this about 8 inches from the bottom. I'm going to slide this into the box on the 120 volt side and snap this bushing in. You may need pliers on this. They are fairly tight. Very tight. All right, now that wire can be pulled through uh, when we go to insert it into the wall. So our cabling that we got is gonna go through this other side, like so. Take your, take your ring, we don't need that right at the moment, sit that in the ladder, we'll slide these swing out ears into the wall, okay, so the box is set there, and then we're going to take our hardware packet that they give us, and you want to pull these long screws out, they only give you two. And they are, they're three inch drywall screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to start these screws into these square holes. Like so. Now if you're, if you shot this box in the center of this cavity, if you shot it in the center of this cavity where you're not toward the stud, and you want it on a stud. If you're an inch off, you can always put a piece of packing material, a piece of wood against this side so that you could utilize these screws. Um, that's why I, I'm pretty adamant about locating that stud and putting it right beside it. I want a solid connection. Now, toe screwing things in. Okay, these are number two bit. 
two screwing things in, this is going to want to pull it into the wall, and what we want is flush. So I'm going to hold it so it's about 3 16 an eighth to 3 16 out of the past the sheetrock. I'm going to get that one started. About the same at the top. And when you tighten those screws up, that box is going to pull in. That's flush, and that's flush. We got a nail pop from doing that. Right, if you can see it right there. So now that the box is in, it's flush. We're going to take our trim ring, slide our trim ring up, turn it so it goes in position. Okay. We're going to take our hardware pack and be careful not to cut yourself. You want to get the white flat head screws out of this trim pack. We're going to install these now. So these these four holes, one, two, three, four. These actually marry the trim ring to the box. Don't over tighten them. Okay, we got those tight. We have enough length on our wire from the back of the box out. You need a minimum of six inches. I'm going to go for from for about eight inches from the back to the front. I like a little extra wire. Now these boxes, because the the knockouts protrude to the inside, they're very tight. Um, I'd hate to put two wires in this box. We only got one for this application. Um, so what we're going to do? These are on swing ears. And what we're going to do is we're going to pinch the, the trim ring and the box against the sheetrock. So these four additional screws, the ones that are sticking out that are loose, we're going to push into the wall, push your wires away, away toward the back to make sure that your wire is not caught up around those swing ears. And you're going to impact until you see and hear it tighten. Listen for it, the impact. So there's a spand when you're tightening it up that it's going to free spin. You want to go until you hear it starting to impact again. So that one's tight. You make sure you get the right screw. Make sure our 120 volt wire is not hitting. And the last screw. All right. Now we're going to take our going to take our brush plate. Insert the wires from the back of the brush plate. Take our screws, being careful not to drop them down the wall. Get it, get it started in the, the second hole up, the innermost holes. take and install our tamper proof decor receptacle go about half inch to three-quarter inch from the back score down the wire lightly lightly score pass the blade score heavy put your blade on the Romex jacket put a little effort into the pull of it and it pulls right off there's no slicing and dicing we don't want to accidentally cut the outer jacket of that wire. Put your blade against your paper 
and pull. Now we're going to take our hot and we're going to strip about seven eighths back, grab three eighths and do a hook. Seven eighths back, strip, three eighths, do a hook. Hook your ground. We're going to install a tamper proof white decora receptacle. Um, let, this is a Levington. Take your take your device screwdriver. Tighten the ground up. Now your silver screw is your neutral. It's your white wire. And if your screws aren't distinguished enough or you're colorblind, you can look for the larger blade. The larger blade on the face of the outlet is always the neutral, where these, these are polarized. One blade's bigger, one blade's smaller. Bigger blade's a neutral. Now this is a 15 amp receptacle. We'll make sure that you don't have any insulation tightened underneath the screw and no none of the bare copper is past the back of the outlet. I'm going to tighten up the extra screw that we're not using. Doesn't really matter on uh, which screw terminal that you put it on on this gold or brass colored side. They're both hot. I'm going to tighten up the extra screw. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to spiral this to the back of the box. Make sure your ground stays on the bottom. I'm going to tighten this up with my number two Phillips in my M12 Milwaukee impact driver. Make sure your ground is not hitting your neutral or your hot. Take our double decora hard plate, grab the, the corner, strong hold it, pull down. No utility knife needed. Now be careful not to drop the screws out of this. They have fallen in the bottom of the package. Let's see if I can retrieve them. Now, we're going to take our cabling, find the end of it, and run it through our double decora from the back side. Now, we need to check alignment. Look at that. Got lucky on that one. Perfect alignment. We're going to use a uh, straight, straight trim screw. It's like a 3 16 blade. And my fat fingers trying to get a hold of these things is a job. Don't snug them up too tight. You will break this cover. It is a very hard plastic. And it is non-forgiving. Next step is we're going to take a magic eraser, put a little moisture on the magic eraser, and we're going to get these pencil lines off. I got a piece of a magic eraser. Well, it's not much left to it. But this will clean up. This will clean up those lines. Fairly decent. This one, this magic racer is about a bit of dust. <coughs> Excuse me. All right.
Time to do the bottle. cabling at the top we got cabling at the bottom now what I want to see is about three foot up and about three or four feet at the bottom and like I said this is a 15 foot uh, cable assembly now that they were taped together I'm going to take the uh, tape off <coughs> let's pull some cable up Try to make them even. Try to make them even coming out. And pull them up for the customer. Uh oh. Houston, we got a problem. The brush plate fell apart. Another day, another dollar. I'll have to replace it tomorrow. Well, we won't be replacing it in this video. So, take your brush plate, do the same thing that we did with the top, we're going to do it on the bottom. Slide your HDMI and your TRG6 cables through, like so. And I guess we got to be a little bit more delicate with these. Now I'm going to take and push this brush plate to where most of the damage is. It's on that side. And get our uh, single day quarter plate. And we are going to find the end of our cables and run them through. Now where uh, this is the end feed, the home run coming from uh, where the, the meter socket's at outside, uh, I want to extend this cable to make it about the same length as these. So they were to put a dresser, uh, an on wire or something here, they'll be able to run this home run cable up into it to the uh, TV connection or the equipment that they're going to. So I've got a piece of uh, scrap RG6 that I've got got one end on it already and it looks to be about the same length we'll go ahead and put we'll go ahead and strip this out if you've ever seen one of these this is a Klein, Klein Tools RG6 stripper um, they have them for different sizes this one I do I believe we'll do RG59 RG6 and RG6 quad uh, it's fairly easy to use slip the blade in like so until it marries up flush on the back side Spin it around, push the button, pull the tool off, give a little twist, pull your, your grounding wires, your static ground back down, get a uh, uh, either a, a compression or crimp style. I use uh, the WeatherTight uh, compressions. Different companies make them. Insert it through the back until you see the white insulator flush up to the inside. I've got the uh, lin linear ideal compression tool. I'm going to take the uh, take it, insert it into the back end of the handle, squeeze. It's done. That's simple. Now I'm going to put a 
cable extender onto this. We don't need the uh, the nut and the flat washer. I'll take that off. Insert this extender coupler nut onto it. And I'm going to tighten it up so it doesn't come undone. We're going to do a another connector on the opposite end of this. Then we're going to take and tie it into our splice. tightening it up. Now carrying out the rest of this cable I'm going to re-identify this black cable as with yellow for home run. Put a couple bands of tape on there and the low voltage side is done. Next we'll hook up the, uh, the outlet. All right let's wire this outlet up. Now we've got some extra slack from the wire that was up in the wall. Um, you can pull it down so it's uh, bottomed out. I prefer to push about six inches of slack up the wall in case somebody opens this wall up. They'll have enough they can uh, staple it to the stud. So I'm not going to pull it. I'm not going to pull it all down. Leave a little bit of slack. So there's really nothing, really nothing holding that wire from falling. Cut your jacket off, pull your paper off. Now on these wires coming from the bottom, your application might be a little different than mine. Put your blade on your insulation jacket in the middle and pull. Start about half to three quarters of an inch from the back of the box. Score ever so slightly, not to damage the wire. Pull your jacket back down, put your blade in the center, and pull. Pull off all your paper. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to connect the grounds first. So I'm going to push this wire up in the box. I'm going to pull the hot and the neutral away from it. I'm going to pull the, the coppers over to this right hand corner and I'm going to push them to the back of the box and push them down. Put the wires together. I'm going to keep my finger on it so that wire doesn't fall. Take your linemans and start spiraling them together. keep some tension on that. Now I'm going to pick the uh, the longest one. I'm going to cut off the other two. I'm going to use a greenie in this, this application which actually has a hole at the very end of it. Slide that onto your wire and tighten that greenie up. We're going to take Push your ground to the back. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. You need at least six inches from the back of the box. Like I said, I leave mine long. Now we're gonna group all of our neutrals. Try not to get them crossed. I'm gonna bring my hots to the left and my neutrals to the right. I'll spiral them together, like so. Now, cutting, cutting this, cutting this from the back of the box, you need a minimum of six inches. I usually go for eight. Now, the longest wire that you see, this one, is going to be my pigtail. I'm going to strip seven eighths of an inch back, seven eighths of an inch back on this, on each one of these. Take these and line them all together. 
get, it, get your linemans on them and spiral them together. Now I'm going to cut, cut them back so it's about 5 eighths of an inch reveal. I'm going to use a tan wire nut to connect the four 14 gauge wires together. And I've got my finger saver here. I'm going to take this wire and we're going to roll it to the back of the box. Like so. And group all your hots together. Give them a light spin. Cut them. Save the longest for a pigtail. Strip seven eighths off. Seven eighths off of each one of these. Line them all up. And repeat the process. Now keep in mind, this is new construction. The power is not on. Before you touch any circuit, you need to assume that it's hot. You need to confirm that it is a dead circuit before you get putting your fingers onto this. I don't want to see anybody or hear anybody dying from one of my videos, instructional videos. Make sure the power is off. Roll this back into the box. I try to leave my wire nuts in a vertical position so there's no kinks. Radiuses are better than kinks. Hook your bare copper, strip 7 eighths to 1 inch on your hot, grab 3 eighths of an inch back, do a spin, do a spin. Now on this we're going to do uh, regular receptacles on the bottom half. All right, we're going to start with our ground, get your device screwdriver. I'm using a flip bit ideal screwdriver with a nut driver on the end. Silver screw is the neutral. I'm going to snug up the one that's unused. Gold screw is the hot. Make sure that the insulation is not past the, the bare copper is not past the back of the outlet. Make sure the insulation is not caught under the screw. Same on that side. We'll take your wires. Make sure they're not kinking. Looks like the uh, looks like the drywallers tore the paper. Right there, right there toward the top. Get our cover plate. Put a cover plate on. And tighten the screw. Now, I leave my screws in the vertical fashion. Um, I would suggest if you're doing vertical screws, uh, do vertical in the whole entire house. It doesn't matter horizontal if you want to. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our installation of the uh, Arlington in the wall TV box. Uh, 120 volt low voltage. Um, makes a nice flush application. Uh, your TV hardware, your holding bracket if you're not in like such and so. And the TV, the top of the TV will cover all the wires up. So I hope you all thought this was informative and uh, entertaining. And uh, if you all could please leave me a comment at the bottom, greatly appreciate it. Consider subscribing to my channel and uh, hit the notification bells for up and coming videos. Uh, I am almost at my halfway point of 500 subscribers. I'm trying to reach that thousand mark. So I'm getting ready to do a 500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, stay tuned for uh, that giveaway. I'm going to ask you three questions, uh, answer the questions uh, related to a past video, and I'll put your name in the pot, and there will be an up-and-coming episode where I'll draw for the winner. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, stay safe out there.